So first thing that uh, uh, something I want us to talk about briefly this morning is the Ajisu seat. So the MPP's Ajisu parliamentary is indeed the Ajisu parliamentary is now vacant following the death of John Kuma. The NDC have not said they will contest yet. Yesterday we had Mr. Bande say they will make a decision on the matter. But if you look at the voting trend, Ajisu is a predominantly MPP voting area. So it's almost certain that whoever wins the MPP primary is going to be the MP for Ajisu, barring any surprises or any independent candidates. Now, we understand nine or ten people have thrown their hats into the ring, of which no mean a person than former FA President Kwesi Nyantechi's name has come up. He's been speaking quite recently on a number of things. Now, the background is Mr. Kwesi Nyantechi was captured in an Ananas, I remember, <coughs> Ananas documentary, uh, receiving money <coughs> in a very compromising video. This number 12 video led him to be banned by the FIFA Ethics Committee for life after he was found guilty of breaching ethics regulations on conflict of interest, bribery and corruption and commission. Now, of course, his life ban was later reduced to a 15-year sanction by the Court of Arbitration for Sport. And of course, in Ghana, he's been talking. He, he recently said that he had given Anas $100,000 a bribe essentially not to show the incriminating documentary a claim Anas has denied now the MPP has open nominations and the primary will be held in a week 13th of this month or maybe in 11 days or nine days and there's a whole discussion around whether it's number one should he himself be thinking of going to Parliament to the extent that there are cases pending around him which have not been fully disposed of that's number one number two looking at the position he he used to hold and the fifa decision on him is he in good moral standing to run for mp that's question two number three the mpp itself as a political party should they allow him to contest and will possibly win and represent the people of Ejusu in parliament does the qualification for mp not include a certain ethical or moral track record essentially on the basis of the public uh, opprobrium that the whole anas episode brought to him um let me start with the mpp itself because yesterday umaru sandamadu <coughs> spoke to the ashanti regional secretary of the party adam appear <coughs> on whether they were concerned about the the man's background in opening the nominations this is what he said. Parliament is referred to as the August House, and the members are referred to as Honorable. So when a candidate is um, showing his intention to contest for um, the candidate of a municipal constituency, it is up to the best committee to peruse his um, document files and then come out with their verdict. But the, on the other leg, the issue of um, embarrassment um, and, and uh, the likes of those, I don't think that um, for now, um, there's a case against Mr. Nyan Um A person is not guilty by the structure of our constitution. A person is not guilty on accusation or on allegation of... Uh, offenses and so and unless that person has subscribed to the guilt or proven guilty by the court and the and the and the um um uh, measure is beyond reasonable doubt so for now mr nyantechi has not proven guilty by any competent court of jurisdiction so i'm speaking on my part as a personal on as my personal view I don't think Mr. Nyantechi has been proven guilty by any court in Ghana. And until that is done, or he himself admits his guilt before a court of competent jurisdiction, I will not say that Mr. Nyantechi is guilty. And for that matter, he doesn't qualify to pick a form to contest for a just constituency. So the person I just spoke to before you came on um, has made the point that, well, yeah, um, legally he is not bad, but morally there may be issues and it may even be an internal challenge for him in the MPP and then an external one when it comes to the by-election. And even if he becomes MP and is nominated for any position, that issue will continue to remain an arbitrage around his neck. 
that is um uh, issue of morality. My brother, if I'm I'm in a compound house with you, are, you are uh, uh, with you, and you are out, and I cook the food, and your children are there, and don't give them the food to eat. I've not committed any crime. But if I should go on Mola a uh, Mola uh, leg and give them food, and at the end of the day there's food, I'll be held responsible. There's a clear difference between morality and legality. Let's concern ourselves with legal issues. Insofar as Mr. Yantaji has not been proven guilty by court of competence prediction, there's no bar, there's no effect on his intention to um, 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 pick a form or be cleared by the party. Those issues of morality, there's no bar, if I should say, there's no bar. The, the risk is for the court to decide whether he's guilty or not guilty. In Ghana, we quickly run to pass judgment on others based on moral uh, 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 issues, but we always want to leave legal issues which are compelling out instead of concentrating on the legal issues. We always want to pass judgment on people based on moral issues. Um, the two are separate things. Let's, let's build a society based on uh, legality. Moral issues are secondary to uh, uh, legal issues, if I should say. Okay. Um, what are the what is the criteria for you as a party in choosing a parliamentary candidate and for that matter, an MP? We 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 base our criteria on what the electoral committee says for us. If a person is an uh, of sound mind, if a person is not uh, uh, bad by a court of competent jurisdiction, for instance. Having engaged himself in electoral fraud, or having committed of electoral, committed of electoral offense, which debar the person from death. Uh, uh, we 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 do not have anything aside this set by uh, the laws of Ghana, the representation of the people, and the constitution. We follow them strictly. So, insofar as um, he qualifies to perform. He may be passed by uh, the vetting committee, who is it in judgment uh, 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 over the nomination forms submitted by any other person, including Mr. Kwasin Yandichi. Now, the question is, if the GFE, and for that matter, the people who run football in Ghana, thought that he was not fit to run football, for which reason he left, at the time the headlines were screaming, disgraced GFE president and it was one of the reasons that he he ended up not being the GFE president. If those people thought he was not fit to hold the office, is that a thought that the NPP as a party would also want to start thinking about? That if he was not fit for one public job, then he should not be fit for another? The bar... Um, to cross is not set out by any other individual other than the Electoral Commission or the Constitution of Ghana and the Representation of the People's Act and its um, CIS and other things. But um, being being uh, uh, declared un unfit for um, a particular position is not a bar for contesting for uh, uh, elections in any other area that the person may choose. In any case, Jesus Christ was crucified a sentence and crucified. At that time, they thought that um, he had, um, he had um, what, what they call it, he had um, conflicted himself with the existing law. But today, we, you and I know that his crucifixion was wrong. He did not commit any offense, and he was crucified. In my the same way, Christian Tachim might have been crucified by an area uh, 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 or an aspect of our our. our political institu institutions or social institutions. That does not mean that he is barred from any other thing to contest for any other position uh, in Ghana. We cannot stretch that argument to uh, 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 level. If you stretch it to that level, we are being unfair to the man. So that was the uh, Ashanti Regional Secretary of the NPP, Adoma Pia. Speaking of the same program, 
Vice Azim, who is an anti-corruption campaigner, former head of uh, Transparency International local chapter, urged Mr. Nyantechi to reconsider his decision to contest, basically saying he should advise himself. Parliament is referred to as the August House, and the members are referred to as Honorable. So when a candidate whose name has been mentioned in some investigations of corruption allegations, one expects that he or she should consider not to put up himself or herself for elections to parliament. No matter whether he has been prosecuted and found guilty or not, it's a dent on him. And it cannot easily just be wiped away. They may not be legal, we may not legally, it may not be possible to legally bar him from contesting. But as, uh, as somebody interested in parliament or interested in politics, he himself should even consider not putting himself up for elections. So you are making the moral argument, not a legal one. Yes, I actually do not think. I'm not a lawyer, but I do not think we can legally bar him from contesting. But you see, it's not even the fact that he has come out to admit that he paid money, but the mere fact that at the very beginning he was a key player in the NAS investigations. And even though he has not been prosecuted, uh, investigated and prosecuted, he himself has not been able to exonerate himself. And he has not even implicated himself by admitting that he paid he pay money, blackmail money to announce to stop him from airing the, 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 the expose. Why? Because it, cont it probably contained information that would further implicate him. So, if he has a conscience, himself should not even stand. What should the, polit the political besides, party... Okay, go ahead. Besides, the, the his rivals are going to use it against him. And if he goes to parliament and his government is in power, and he's nominated for administrative position, again, this issue is going to dominate the, the select committee's uh, uh, status hearing of his of his, uh, his suitability for that position. Having even today, even today, I suspect that if somebody goes to Parliament and is go to Commission on Human Rights and reports complaints that uh, of what he has done, Chad may go ahead and investigate it and probably sanction him if they find out that he was culpable in the acts. Having people in the past been accused of bigger crimes and yet they went through and uh, took up public office? Yes, people have probably, I don't remember offhand, but people have probably done that in the past. But you see, the democracy is now about 30, is it 30 years old. Should we continue to do the wrong things that we did in the past? Should people not have integrity? and continue to rely on the fact that, well, you belong to a party in power, and so nobody can say anything against you. The party will, once the party endorses you, you will go ahead. But these are things that we are doing for the future, and for our children, and our children's children. We need to think of these things when we decide to put ourselves up for public positions. What do you think his political party or the political party he's seeking to represent, what should the party do? Oh, the party could disqualify him. But I don't think the party would do that. You know, he was not the only person mentioned in that analysis expose. Even the president and the vice president were mentioned. But they are still having power. They are in, they are, they are in authority, police of authority. So the party is not likely to do anything about to prevent him from contest. They will allow him to go to the primaries. And if he wins the primaries, the party will support him in the actual elections. So you're actually appealing to his conscience and asking that he steps down, not necessarily for him to be prevented from running. Yes, that he, does, he cannot be bad, I think, from running. But 
the fact that, I mean, he himself should step down on conscience, but also the fact that his, 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 his openness or, or rivals will use it against him. And it will continue to be quoted and referred to in the future if he goes into public office now. Oh, the Vice President Azim speaking to Maru Sandamadu. By the way, there are nine names that have come up. Let me just run through. Uh, Abna Pokua Boite. Uh, we told she is a four-time contender. Current constituency chairman Kofi Ajepong is also interested. Um, there's also second vice Kwabena Boating expressing interest. Wife of Bono Region chairman of MPP Porsche Champong Abronye. So that's Abronye DC's wife. Has also made the intention known. Current presiding member of Ejusu Municipal Assembly Helena Mensa has also made her intentions known. Former presiding member of Ejusu Municipal Assembly, Michael Ousu, expressed interest. Lecturer at Akintina Pia Menka University of Skills, Training and Entrepreneurial Development, Dr. Evans Duya, has also expressed interest, as has Kwesi Nyantechi. So, nine names interested in replacing John Kuma as MPP flag, MPP candidate and possibly MP. A minute past eight, what are your thoughts? Um, so there are three levels to this. The man himself, he's clearly interested in contesting. So the party, should the party advise him or try and stop him legally? Then what about the poll of Ejusu in terms of the MPP electorate? All right? And should the standard for MP be only legal? Should it also not be ethical and moral? These are the questions we have to answer when we come back. Discussing, I feel we should jump in. Sky, so you listen to Vitus Azim. First, you listen to the Ashanti Regional Secretary of the Party, MPP, who says, look, there's nothing legally barring the man from running. but And they don't even feel they want to impose any impediments on him. Mr. Azim says, yes, legally there's nothing, but he feels the man himself ought to wait for those matters to be cleared. But just a reminder, so there are two things. There's the F- Anas video that was shown for the whole public to see. Mm-hmm. Then there's the FIFA actions on him that got him to lose his position as FIFA banned from football initially for life and now 15 years. And then he lost his position as GFA chairman. Then there's the court case that the state has brought against him, which has not really gotten a lot of traction. Can you remind us what really has he been charged with? So he was uh, in 2021 Mm. um, charged with um, fraud. Mm-hmm. and conspiracy to co- commit fraud and related charges by the state uh, yeah by the, by the attorney general they are the only people who have the authority to mm-hmm. do that uh, and fraud article, and conspiracy to commit fraud yeah um you know uh, and article 88 of the constitution mm. um, and this followed the um video evidence that was made public by anas arimeyao anas in which um, Mr. Nyantechi uh, was seen mm-hmm. taking what some perceive as money. Mm-hmm. Um, I cannot say with certainty whether it was money or not, mm-hmm. but the general view expressed by some who saw the video is that it was money that he was um, allegedly receiving mm-hmm. and putting into a bag. Of course, we all know the uh, alleged comment he made uh, while he was. Um, allegedly receiving the money, the suggestion that powerful people in government, including the current vice president of the republic uh, and uh, up the chain, um, would be sorted out, uh, in essence, uh, in order to get certain things done and fast-tracked within our country. So it became a big matter. Mm -hmm. Um, Adnas, as is always, is... uh, his modus operandi, or eventually petitioned the appropriate institutions to look into the matter. And on the basis of that, uh, he was charged in court uh, for, for, for on those matters. Then, of course, we know that there was a defamation suit that Anas took out against him, which mm-hmm. was dismissed. Mm-hmm. Then now he's gone on air to say that he offered Anas $100,000 mm-hmm. to get the number 12 video mm-hmm. shelved. Mm-hmm. Anas has come to deny it. But for me... But it's also important to say that the state has been lackadaisical yes. in prosecuting this matter. Yes. When the charges were initially filed, mm-hmm. um, the state was not serious. I mean, yeah. I mean with all due respect... In fact, the judge was, the not yeah, was not happy with the matter. Yeah, it was not happy, and, and they, threw, they, 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 they threw the matter out. Mm-hmm. And they refiled mm-hmm. anew. Mm-hmm. Now, even that, we have not seen real progress on that. And the judge is giving indications that if this April... Oh, April has... April passed. No, April we are in April. Yes, uh-huh. yes. If we've not seen positive movement and seriousness on the part of the, the prosecutors, mm-hmm. then 
he may be you know minded to want to throw the matter out to the best of my understanding of of the reports in the public domain so so that is where we are presently the state has not shown seriousness on the evidence of what is in the public domain that he wants to prosecute this matter because it was a huge issue the vice president's name was mentioned mm -hmm. that of the president um, also you know indicated in in that uh, video that was put out and one would expect that a serious country will treat this matter with dispatch yeah but for some reason yeah. it's been four years or so yeah. and the matter hasn't come to it the, the other challenge i have with the, the intention of the nyan issue to run mm. is so is there not an a, a public ethical standard for public office in the sense that while legally he's not being convicted of any crime for what fifa did mm. and you see fifa isn't even it's funny fifa is not even like your um what's the word i want to use F fifa does not exude necessarily <laughs> any high levels of ethics generally if you look at the way the world perceives fifa mm -hmm. general perception people believe there's a lot of corruption in football in awarding of games and all of these things so fifa is not your standard your best standard for 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 morality ethics or or whatever mm. and yet fifa banned him for life and then later reduce it to 15 years so it was a court for arbitration for sports so it wasn't fifa it was a court mm -hmm. yeah so he went to court for arbitration <coughs> and he managed to get 15 years but it's still a ban nonetheless yeah all right my point is that fifa is not your gold standard for ethics mm -hmm. but even fifa found it necessary to ban him for life mm -hmm. it was a high profile ban because mr Antichi at the time was one of the high ranking officials of CAF. Mm -hmm. he was actually penciled to be president of CAF. yeah so it was a fall from grace to grass mm -hmm. right of course following from there he lost his fa position now should 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 the, should for of course he would want to stand because he's maintained his innocence so i can't blame him for thinking that he wants to be mp mm -hmm. do you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. number two he will mount a defense in court that he's done nothing incriminating mm -hmm. but i have two problems for him to say publicly on tv that he gave an ass a hundred thousand dollars to try and shelve the documentary you get me he said it openly so he said it on the media mm -hmm. Now he didn't see say he gave to Anas, he gave to somebody an intermediary. An intermediary. Still a to, to admit in public that you are giving money is like hush money. Is that what it was? I mean, it's not, why is Donald Trump going through problems? One of the issues in the one of the cases Donald Trump is facing is the alleged payment of money to some woman. Payment of hush money in the US is generally not an offense. But the the case against him is that he allegedly try to conceal it that's that's my point uh -huh. and i'm saying that bring that to ghana former fa boss mm. former CAF executive um gunning for that position fifa mm. now saying that you have breached their ethical rules and rules standards. and standards based on anti-corruption and therefore you are banned for life 15 years no, let's FIFA's, no let's, I'm, I'm, there's no reason FIFA and CAS. Yeah, but the position has changed. You don't understand me. Mm -hmm. The fact is that FIFA banned him for life. Yes. He went to arbitration in the court and obtained a judgment which is favorable to him. Yeah, so the FIFA position is no longer valid. What is valid now? Is no, it, no, it, no I'm, not talking, it's, I'm not talking of its validity as in it holds, uh -huh. but as a matter of public record. Uh, okay. Do you understand but what I'm the record has since been... Yes, but it, it is still in, his, it is in his history. <laughs> well, let's think with 15. Well, maybe I don't understand the way arbitration works as against a court. Yeah, so, so the 15 fine. year is the position. Fine. Uh -huh. Banned for 15 years. Yes. It's like a sentence. Yes. 15 years. Mm -hmm. All right. Now... So uh, that is there, and then also saying that I try to pay for somebody not to show something about me. Mm. You can say that because he believes that what was going to be shown was not true. Mm. He or he believed it was not true. Mm. He was entitled to say that he was going to make that payment. Mm. But I feel to admit that you made a payment to stop something, in a way, it's also a moral problem, in my view. Mm. All right. So that's two issues. Now, the MPP as a political organization. I think have a decision to make mm -hmm. what caliber of person do you want to represent your people in a jiso there's the of course somebody who's run football in ghana before obviously administratively as a lawyer is a competent person but is the person morally and ethically fit mm -hmm. 
to hold that position. Mind you, when we had the banking crisis, people were declared unfit to hold positions in finance because they oversaw the decadence of financial institutions. Yeah. So what I'm saying is I'm not importing something from space. If people who have not even been proven guilty by a court yet, right? But so I'm coming on. The BOG mm -hmm. and all the people who did the resolution. These are regulators. Good. The regulators came out to say that for people who have not yet been convicted, for the role they played in the class financial institutions, they were not fit. Were not fit. So they called it fit for purpose. Mm. Now, my question is, which is a higher position, MP or bank manager? You can argue that MP, because you regulate MP. You make loans. MP is very powerful because you can invite the board governor, you can invite the minister of finance, you can invite anybody and summon them to any parliamentary committee. So I want to argue that the position of a member of parliament is a very high moral standard. Mm -hmm. All right. So... I feel the new patriotic party, beyond the constitutional requirement of his over 18, his you call it corpus mentis, right? Is that what you say? Mm -hmm. He's of a sound mind. He's eligible. There should be an ethical standard, right? Mm -hmm. And that ethical standard should, and I'm not saying they should debar him in sense of saying legally you are not bound, but you know, Political parties are organizations of consensus. Find a way to say that this may not be the best time for you to stand until maybe some other matters are cleared. Mm -hmm. So not to say, say you are you are you cannot be MP. You, you get me? So because I was listening to somebody who was telling me that look, ethics are for internal control and law for external control. So they work like two legs of a, 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 a person. Mm -hmm. So the law is the right leg, the ethics or okay, the law is the right leg, that is the left leg. So, it's not everything that you can... Law cannot do everything. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. So, it's a very bad example, but I'll give it nonetheless. So, maybe Caleb is dating a lady. Mm -hmm. And Caleb's best friend knows about the relationship. Mm -hmm. Then Caleb and the lady have a problem. Caleb, just touch wood, I'm just yeah. saying. So, you and the lady, <laughs> you had a fight and you, you won't date each other again. <clears throat> now, your best friend a year later begins to date this lady now you, you have probably moved on you've already gotten a new fiance all right your your best friend has not broken any law by dating your former girlfriend but because you're your best friend and you know the relationship ethically is some way for him to date this this person chances are he contributed to the mess. that's the point so you will now say <laughs> hey cool it is said how many if you have any problem you know also can we Bernard, let's just you see people are sending me a message Bernard is giving an example, example. Stop bad example. You are doing. so so what i'm saying is, yeah, follow my final thought i'm saying that legally mm -hmm. the court case has not been proven mm -hmm. so he's not bad legally but i'm saying that on the basis of the 15 year ban and the whole public thing that happened to him mm -hmm. the, the the new patriotic party allow him to stand at this time because i feel like if for example the court case is dispensed with and if all the charges are dropped then you can say look the man is in a strong position mm -hmm. because all the things the state took against him have been dropped so he probably needs some compensation because he's been unfairly whatever mm -hmm. Do you get it but now you have in this case you need an ethical standard for public office so that's why parties vet people now the vetting doesn't just prove that you are 18 yeah. that you are competent but they can even check for example they can say ah you said you went to KNUST and finished in 2004 how come the, 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 there's no KNUST record ah you are lying to us so they will say oh if you've lied to us it possibly means that you are also not morally fit or ethically fit mm -hmm. you point. I so know. i feel like the mpp as a first step should be custodians of they are gatekeepers to who enters parliament. Mm -hmm. And because Ejisu is such a dominant MPP seat, it's easy for somebody to go through and become MP. If it was a mm -hmm. place like I also was to gone, mm -hmm. or it was a place which was very, very close, then I don't think they will risk it. Mm -hmm. Mind you, this is the same MPP yeah. that told yeah. Jachi, that told voters in Asin North mm -hmm. that they shouldn't vote for Jassi Kwesim because he has a case. Mm -hmm. And that they shouldn't vote for yeah. an encumbered MP. Yeah. yeah. Do you get it? That's the argument they made. Mm -hmm. So how come and, now... And that case was even on citizenship. Dual citizenship. So how come now they are now saying that, well, 
there's no law that the, the standard it should be the standard should be applied do you so MPP should say okay we thought the articulation because of all the cases he's facing it's not even advisable for people in the place to vote for him that was a political argument they make not a legal argument yeah but that that is still we should have standards mm-hmm. do, do you get it and i have nothing against them but i feel like if all that happened and it was a global issue i mean he was a high-ranking calf official who fell from grace to grass in a sense you can say it brought ghana's name it reduced ghana's standing in calf mm-hmm. because he was our guy who was supposed to go and become calf president and all of this happened to him then he goes into parliament Parliament is a very, very important... If you look at the number of things that come before the committees, yes, he may be competent technically as a lawyer or whatever. He's run football, so obviously he knows a thing or two about leadership. But that ethical question should also be high. Now, the reason I'm asking MPP is when you go to the voters themselves, I don't trust the voters because the voters are the people who collect laptops and vote, what they, uh, flat screens and Sometimes, vote. Sometimes. So, so yeah, so that, I mean, I'm talking about the delegates now. Yeah, so yeah, I'm not, not I'm, all I'm, of them. Yeah, I'm, maybe, I'm not sure so if fun. delegates uh-huh. will be the right people to appeal to, to say, don't vote for this guy. Because for them, it's mostly the highest bidder. So the, 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 the political party governance is what is failing. Not even political party voters. Do you get it? Because mm. political party voters, they, they, they'll vote based on what they think. And it's, it, it goes back to why we have to even break up this delegate system. Okay, because the delegates are people of interest. It's not like everybody who's an MPP supporter and just who's voting. These are people who are special people who have been selected. So they can decide that they will hold their party to ransom and do what they want to do. Mm. Right? But in public, like there should be a bit of... We should have a standard. We shouldn't say, unless we think that, oh, the MPs, nah, what is it? What is parliament? That's we should say that he couldn't go. Isn't he better than most of the people there? You get me? So, I feel like the MPP should be stronger to say no. And I'm not saying they should buy him. They should talk to him and say, no, bro, you are a very influential person. Even with all that you've been through, we don't think this is the time for you to become MP. Because we don't want to paint a picture that MPP endorses what has been, what you've been accused of doing until you are fully cleared. That's how I see it. But he is even granting interviews and saying that well, it's a perception. And that he offered money. To- yeah. So I feel like I. So what are we saying? So what are we telling our kids? What sh- are you telling me that there are no gatekeepers, moral gatekeepers, or you not know, even ethics? Because as I said, all things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. So there's a difference between law and ethics. I understand that, but law cannot always run the society. Ethics keep us honest, fair, and caring. Remember, Tuba says something. He said, it is perfectly legal sometimes to be dishonest, unfair, and uncaring. But it is not ethical to do this. Do you, you know what I said? He was speaking at the program and says, it is perfectly legal to be dishonest sometimes, to protect your own interest. It is legal to be unfair and uncaring. But it is not ethical to do this. That's why we need ethics in addition to law. Do you understand me? So I, I am a bit disappointed in the way the party is, is at least from the secretary's position, and the fact that he himself is granting interviews doesn't see any problem. And from all the names I've seen, he's probably the most high profile, obviously, possibly the most competent in terms of leadership track record. Right? He's run football for years. He's been on CAF. So if he comes, his, his credentials are higher than the rest of them. But ethically, should we not... Sky, you, you see where I'm going? It's a, bit, it's a very delicate situation. But I feel like the Ghanaian public in allowing him to run and even voting for him, it will be a new law, in my view. Mm. Respectfully. You can tidy it up if you disagree with me. <laughs> but this, this is my this is my respective view. Okay, that's I, I stand to be I stand for you. I, I defer to you on the law, uh-huh. not on the ethics. I, I I understand where you are coming from, Bernard, and um I associate myself um to a large extent. Uh, with all that you have said, because look, we might send send the right signals as to what exactly we want to establish as a democracy, and it is not all the time that we would have to see, you know, evidence of what ultimately happens in a courtroom before we decide that we we'll ask for this one. There are issues with it. That is why in many jurisdictions, especially advanced ones, you see people withdraw from races on the basis of Racism. matters that have become yeah. public which hitherto were not public. 
and then um, they say that look i have brought shame and disgrace to yeah. you know myself and my immediate family mm. and then the office i occupy and to that extent i do not intend to continue with this particular race because of a b c d because you are occupying or you intend to go and occupy a position of high repute and people would look up to you and say look one day i want to be like this person and if they look at the history and they say that oh you were involved in you know taking this or that 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 which we mm -hmm. all saw publicly uh, then uh, there are issues there mm -hmm. so to that extent i agree with you but you see the difficulty is the the framing of our laws mm -hmm. you understand we are mm -hmm. a country that is ruled by laws mm -hmm. article 94 tells us who should qualify and who should not qualify to be in parliament and you have nicely stated some of the provisions um, of course one of the provisions article 94 uh, deals with is whether a person has been you know found to have done something bad by a commission or a committee of inquiry now some people want to interpret what happened at the level of fifa to say that to the extent that it was a committee <clears throat> that made those adverse findings against him mm -hmm. then we should import their findings into ghana and say mm -hmm. that he is not by our laws qualified under article 94 mm -hmm. to become a member of parliament or a candidate for office as as member of parliament well the question that legal question that emerges is whether we can make that assumption because the constitution itself tells us expressly how a committee or a commission of inquiry is to be set up. Generally, the president is the person empowered to set up a commission of inquiry. And he issues, you know, a constitutional instrument or executive instrument, as the case may be, mm -hmm. to that effect. Mm -hmm. um, committees of inquiry generally are, you know, formed by ministers and appropriate authorities on the orders of, you know based on what the minister thinks has gone wrong. So, for instance, the Jura situation, they set up a committee to deal with it. Um, and then they return a report. The report of that committee can form the basis for dealing with somebody who wants to go to parliament and there are questions as to whether the person should be in parliament or not. So, the point I'm making is that if you look at the constitution, strictly speaking, it may be difficult to say that Mr. Uh, Nyantechi please, you are not coming to Parliament because he has not been convicted as we speak. The court is still dealing with the matter mm -hmm. and the general position of the law is that a person must be deemed innocent. to be innocent until proving otherwise. But, Bernard, I think it is also important to point out that if you go to um, what they call it, the MPP's constitution, mm -hmm. what did they say there? Article 14, they talk about good character. Mm -hmm. Um, with your permission, let me take mm -hmm. you there so that I can quote MPP the book. Constitution. Yeah. Article 14. Article 14 of the MPP Constitution said mm -hmm. something really interesting about um, uh, who qualifies to be... To be, to, to be a candidate. Uh, yeah. So if you go to Article 14 uh, of the MPP Constitution... Uh, no, it's actually 11. Mm -hmm. Article 11, Selection of Parliamentary Candidate. So um, they list what qualifications there should be. But... Uh, sub clause four, mm -hmm. uh, clause four actually says that no member shall 11 be four. yeah eleven four says that no member shall be entitled to apply for nomination as the party's parliamentary candidate for any constituency unless she mm -hmm. or he mm -hmm. one is known is a known and active member of at least two years mm -hmm. that is a party two says is a registered member and a voter in the constituency mm -hmm. which he or she seeks to represent provided mm -hmm. that in appropriate courses or cases mm -hmm. forgive me the, the print is bad mm -hmm. um provided that appro in appropriate cases <coughs> the constituency executive committee may dispense mm -hmm. with the requirement mm -hmm. <coughs> and then three says it's of good character mm -hmm. and then four says it's otherwise of good standing mm. So uh -huh. they, they, they have good character points. Yes. Yeah, so going. so they and then some other provisions are, are, mm -hmm. are there. Mm -hmm. Now the question we should ask ourselves is whether, strictly speaking, if a person is seen on tape receiving what we interpret to be money, 
and with words that suggest that he intended to go and compromise a public officer to do something he ordinarily not do should we interpret everything that we have seen to mean that he is of bad character now of course if you go to the evidence act there are standards or there's a test that has to be deployed to determine whether the person strictly speaking is of bad character for instance if you are convicted in the court of law that can form basis to say that this person is of bad character you understand so the mpp as a party has a serious question to answer that is whether within the meaning of their own constitution article 11.4 when they look at it, can they say that Mr. Nyantechi is a person of good character? On the tape, people make deductions that he received what looked like money with the intention of influencing a public officer to take a decision he ordinarily would not take because of the Ghanaian interest. We were told that what was involved was cash, money. Is it $100,000 yeah, or so? But, no, but the, don't forget that beyond the tape, mm -hmm. he has admitted that he gave money to some people to try so now he's by his own confession so beyond the tape that mm -hmm. you are saying looks like money mm -hmm. i'm just saying that now he has said yeah. and it's on record mm -hmm. he said it publicly mm -hmm. that he made payments to people to try and get the thing stopped uh -huh. you see I, I i i identify with that position and i agree with the suggestion that even that is self-incriminating yes uh, to, but except that there has to be a nuance around it. If you call it a bribe, it has to satisfy the requirement of our criminal, um, you know, uh, uh, pr criminal code. Because the but law, you, know, you keep going to law, and you see, you've agreed with me already that we are we are straddling law and ethics. Mm -hmm. So even though you agree with me, you, you, you and I'm not saying you are wrong. Your, mm -hmm. your 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 emphasis is more law than ethics. It, there, there's a reason for that. That's why I, I issue because, the right. Because ethics is not a legal issue. That's what I'm saying. Ethics, Unless it is expressly incorporated mm -hmm. into the law. What I'm saying is that the example I give for Caleb, mm -hmm. by Caleb's best friend dating his former girlfriend, mm -hmm. is not illegal, but it's not ethical. Bernard. So my point is that if you keep going to law mm -hmm. when we are trying to discuss an ethical question. Mm -hmm inevitably we may miss the full import of my original argument no you see that's why i issued a rider that mm -hmm. i agree with you if i were i, I, I were nyantechi if today all of those things knock on wood happen to me in the public domain i don't think i'll go and sit there and say that i want to run for public office i won't do that mm. you understand mm. but questions of what you consider ethical generally there may be a general standard but people interpret them depending on what they believe the facts are. But that's in society. I agree with you. But you mm -hmm. see, let me give you an example. South Africa. Mm -hmm. South Africa. There's a story that I just saw. Mm -hmm. This When did this happen? Um, uh, yeah, not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Nosivwe, Mapisa, mm -hmm. Mpaklu or something. South Africa's <laughs> parliament speaker turns itself into police. Mm -hmm. Right? South Africa's speaker of parliament. Nosivwe, Mapisa, Nkalu. Handed herself over to police a day after she resigned over corruption allegations. Yeah. Let me read. Now, she arrived at a police station in a place called Centurion, 40 kilometers from Johannesburg on Thursday. She's due to make her first court appearance at Pretoria Magistrate Court mm -hmm. on charges of corruption. Now, here's the story. The politician is accused of soliciting bribes in return for awarding contracts during her time as defense minister. Mm -hmm. After weeks of investigation, she resigned on Wednesday saying the move wasn't an indication or admission of guilt mm. she said quote given the seriousness of the probe mm. she could not continue in her role yeah she has previously denied any wrongdoing as has mr Nyantichi. Mm -hmm. so we know that he said he has not done anything wrong mm -hmm. so we have a problem with that mm -hmm. but but my point is that in a certain society based on the reverence for the position of speaker mm -hmm. and based on the possibility that the investigation can be seen to conflict with her role mm -hmm. or her continuance in the role will be overshadowed mm -hmm. by the investigation she's stepping aside so that when the matter is clear she may come back uh -huh. so i'm saying that but that's because south african society has a certain standard mm -hmm. now Ghanaian society here mm -hmm. we are mm -hmm. the, the secretary of the party says ah he hasn't done anything wrong mm -hmm. okay so and i'm saying this because we a lot of times use law mm -hmm. to try and gloss over ethical questions yeah and it does and i'm not saying law is not mm -hmm. a good thing mm -hmm. a society and as i said to you atuba said there's 
law for external control, ethics for internal control. So, for example, journalists, mm. there are certain things we do which are lawful but not ethical. Mm. Do you get it? You cannot record a person without a person's consent. Mm. Even though at some point there was, no, position. there was no explicit law against it at the time, mm. when you did it, the GJ was say no, you can't do that because it's not ethical. So we, there are we exceptions to it. I know we are not here to do it. I'm just giving a general position. Mm. So what I'm saying is that mm. the reason why organizations have like GBA, mm. you are a lawyer. Mm. There are certain things you do which may not be illegal, but the Ghana Association will say what you've done is unethical. Yes. So what, what I'm saying is that. In running a country, mm. public office, we must hold ethical standards high. I don't, I don't disagree and with you. And the fact that we are even debating this <laughs> and people don't see <laughs> anything wrong with his <laughs> wanting to even stand as MP <laughs> tells you how low we've sunk as a society, in my view. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, because yeah, we should be so... Con- I mean, Japan. Yeah, but people resign uh-huh. on the... Even the very thought yes. or suggestion uh-huh. that they've done wrong... Uh-huh. They do the honorable thing because the society has a certain high standard Bene, for public let me, office. Let me bring you an example. We, are, uh-huh. we, we will have people in the name of politics justify everything because we profess a certain behavior publicly, but internally we don't hold up to the standard. Bene. So I'm also, it's a commentary on Ghanaian society. So I, I, just on I, I identify that for with us to even mm-hmm. argue about mm-hmm. this thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, we are in not. South Africa, uh-huh. the woman has even resigned. She has, there's nothing proven, no. Yes, you see, Bernard, she hasn't been, and in, in our case, uh-huh. arbitration has given him a 15 year ban. Yes, arbitration judgments are not reversible, as far as I know. So, when you do ADR, yesterday I was told mm-hmm. that as against normal court proceeding, you can go for appeal. When you go for arbitration, arbitration is final. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we can say, as you said correctly, so that now the record is that he's mm-hmm. been banned for 15 years from football related activities for ethical breaches. Mm-hmm by fifa which is not necessarily your greatest but at least cas is a court an international court mm-hmm. right so if an international court has banned you for 15 years it means that they believe you've done something wrong because you will not be banned for 15 years from football activities mm-hmm. for not doing anything wrong mm-hmm. so the arbitration award in itself mm-hmm. is an indication of some ethical breach but do, do you understand my argument yes. so how does that not lead to a society mm-hmm. saying charlie no we cannot we, 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 the people who qualify to enter parliament, yes. at least there has, there has to be. Do you get me, Bernard? You see, I, I, I don't, I don't disagree with you. I am saying that the, the, to make the argument that the person is disqualified on the basis of the findings of an external body, there must be substance in law that leads you to the conclusion that under Ghanaian law. This is the position. To the extent that these findings, these findings have been made elsewhere, we are accepting them wholesale and we are applying yeah, But that's if the MPP mm. wants to legally buy him. Don't forget my argument no, that no, MPP oh, shouldn't I, legally I, no, buy our him. Because though, though, if, you see, if, you see, our address, if yeah, MPP, if if MPP uh-huh. were to want to use the legal route, uh-huh. then the point you are making is clear that then they would have to find a means of saying what the CAS mm-hmm. has done mm-hmm. is something they can import. But I'm saying we are not yet there. MPP should not legally mm-hmm. attempt to buy him because it could run into problems. Supreme yeah. Court case, it could delay the matter. If you look at the fact that things in 13 mm-hmm. days, it will not be a very wise thing to do. Mm-hmm. I am saying, though, that mm-hmm. a party governance mm-hmm. includes... Ah, Sky, we've had people disqualified or spoken to. Yes. I've had, I know mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. in MPP and NDC who want to run for position. Mm-hmm. They are qualified. Mm-hmm. In fact, I, if, I don't even I say this on air. There are seats you know Mm-hmm. where a person was very unpopular mm-hmm. but the person was a very strong person in parliament mm-hmm. the guy the young guy wanted to run it was very clear he was going to win yeah. the party spoke to him and said bro the way political parties work and the, for the internal harmony of the party yeah. we are strongly advising you to withdraw your candidature until a later date mm-hmm. it's not illegal to do that no, to the extent not. that they have not forced him mm-hmm. okay so the tools available to a party are not always go to court we've banned you there's moral suasion. That's There's true. advice. And I'm saying that the MPP mm-hmm. Secretary Fashanti, fine, he was answering the question Sander asked him about law. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there should be some standard in the party that should say no. No. You see, very anti no. Because we respect the people of Ghana and we see parliament as a very high calling, we will not 
allow you to stand or we advise you not to stand at this time. Mm-hmm. Because I feel, as you rightly said, if the court case comes mm-hmm. and he is absolved, then that strengthens his argument that even though I'm not going on a, a purely legal argument, the court case then further strengthens his position that he's been cleared. Do you ask? Because mm-hmm. the court will use a lot of standards mm-hmm. because they are asking, accusing him of fraud. Mm-hmm. Okay. And a man is innocent and proven guilty. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it's for me troubling that he can even have the courage to be on air admitting you get it? So it, it, because he believes that oh, in Ghana it's like everything goes yeah or like yeah, it's, it's like there's something in that posture that troubles me yeah, that we, we don't there's no I don't know how to put it in a way that will not sound disrespectful but we don't have a certain sense of ferrier it's like shame yes, that's but like, you see the, the, the reason the reason I agree and still depart from you is that if you look at it ultimately it is coming down to what he perceives as right and wrong mm. first of all the man says that he was entrapped that is that is what he's publicly said that look i mean he didn't intend to go and do abc the people called him and said abcd and yeah. blah 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 yeah. something was offered of course as far to the best of my knowledge i've not heard him say that he received money yes from the Anas people. But we all saw on video what looked like money. And I'm being very yeah, careful. No, I know. Uh-huh. And I, I want to challenge you. Uh-huh. Because when you go to court, you have to prove that ah, the water you receive, for all you know, is fake money or some, something. So <laughs> if you strictly want to go by technical legal argument, he has room to operate, which is what? These things must be proved in a court of law that I broke the law. Mm-hmm. And Article 94, that is the only basis you can take him out. But he himself, that's why I said that if I were me, he Mr. believes that he's innocent. Yeah, he believes that he didn't do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. Now, if a person believes that he didn't do anything, you can't fall in. You can use your standards and say that, ah, by A, B, C, D standards, generally, you should say no. And then he says that he offered money or gave money to some intermediary to give to a nurse. Now, Bernard, you, we all know that in this media profession, even internationally, there are times that and you can see it many cases in the UK, people would pay money to a media house to arrest a story. Now, it is not necessarily because the, the, they have done anything wrong, but sometimes it's because, oh, they think that, reputation yeah, that it would damage their reputation. So they will buy the whole publication. So for instance, if you print a million copies, they will pay enough money to cover the million. So the, the, news, the, the details will not be released. Them. Exactly. So the, question, the po- point I'm making, uh, if Nyan Teti believes that, look, although you saw me on tape taking something that looks like money and saying, or allegedly saying a, a set of things, I didn't do anything wrong. Yet there was going to be a publication. Which publication would damage my reputation? And therefore offered money. Now the question is whether you can technically de- describe that as bribe. bribe. Because in his view... For all you know, he didn't think that it was bribe. He was basically telling the people who did the documentary that, oh, boss, uh, yes, you are going to publish this. I know you made some expenses towards it. I'm giving you money for A, B, and C so that you can call the thing off. Because he said that somebody had told him that he was acting for and on behalf of Anas, and I don't have any basis to say that that is true or not true. So bring this amount of money and I'll stop the publication. That was the claim that he made. So if he genuinely believes that he didn't do anything wrong, he did not intend to do anything wrong, and the laws don't find him committing bribery, because in any case, if you look at the, the criminal code, it talks about bribery of a public officer or accepting blah, 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 blah. It would seem that he believes that he has not done anything wrong. And to that extent, he says he wants to run. Now, it is up to the party now to look at the facts and say that, look, B, C, D, E, I think that it is not in our interest for you to run. In which case, mm-hmm. if they use Article 11.4 to say you are not qualified to run, mm-hmm. the question will be whether Nyantechi is entitled to go to court and challenge that decision. Which is why I said they shouldn't use Uh-huh. Them. So, <clears throat> you are right in saying that, look, they can talk to him. Yeah. That, oh, and, and these are not things they discuss in the public domain. They would have to engage him behind the scenes and say, oh, Mr. Yantechi, because of A, B, C, D, and D, we think that you should not run. Let him say that, look, I'll go ahead anyway. But in that case, you would expect party big boys, voices who matter in, uh, what do you call yeah, it, the Ejisu, the to go openly and campaign against him, which they are entitled to which do. Uh-huh, which then can change the game so that delegates will ask themselves. So they start on the quiet and then they can... Uh-huh, change. then escalate it to that point. So, and, and listeners, I want you to understand my position. I am not saying that what Nantichi did is good 
mm. or it, blah blah blah. Mm. I'm, I'm making, I'm a lawyer, mm. and I'm making a technical argument, and then also leaning towards mm. the issues of ethics that Bernard has raised with some nuances, mm. so you understand my position clearly. It's very important you made that point. Oh, mm. Bernard, loads of comments. Mm. Uh, Bernard and team, my comment on Nyantechi. Our legal system has kept long in finalizing his case, but FIFA was apt and swift to charge him under conditions including ethics. To them, he is not a corrupt and an unethical person to lead them. Unfortunately, he has not challenged that position, uh, but rather found the impetus to challenge our legal system and processes. Well, if without shame he wins the seat and goes to Parliament, with his background, he might likely be part of the Parliament Select Committee on Sports. Assuming he's not granted any ministerial position, how will the external world see us mm. if he's to lead or be part of a delegation to FIFA? Mm. We won't be taken as a serious country. That's a long one. Yeah, very. The Kosinian Techi issue of wanting to run for office as an MP, the NPP defending his eligibility, certain individuals supporting him, the electorate ready and willing to vote for him, even the clergy's quiet um, silence on the matter, etc., etc., is a clear indicator of how morally bankrupt the nation as a whole has become and the very reason why the country will remain in darkness in God's bad books for a very long time. Very sad indeed, Echo Ochery. Mm. from Shy Hills. Okay. Kusin Yantichi was punished by FIFA not for criminally criminally related but ethical uh, breaches. Re- criminally related issues but et- ethical breaches. Mm. On the delay on, of his trial, it's a lack of key witnesses. A nurse's refusal to go to the dock without his mask is the problem. Kwame Ajay Asante. Mm. Ghana will look... Uh, Ghana will not be taken seriously if Nyantichi wins the primaries to become member of parliament what will make him an honorable member then steve in moscow okay the former gfa boss has been involved in corruption saga he is confirmed it by saying he offered a hundred thousand uh, dollars for the case to be buried which morality does he have to mm. become an mp ghana is the only country uh, we have, please. Mm. Bernard, the South African Speaker of Parliament is under investigation for some alleged 120,000 US dollar scandal. Her home was ransacked. She has not been charged of anything. Nothing has been found yet, but she stepped down. Mm. Good morning, team. Mm. Uh, let's even take out ethics. Before you go for such a position, you will have to talk to party people who have strong standing in the party. So none of these people had the reason to tell him to shelve his plans for now till his case is settled. Our whole political system is a mess. When we say credibility is no more existent in our politics, they will say you don't know what you're talking about. Or is there a bigger picture we are not seeing because by even saying he attempted to pay for the case not to be leaked, Massa. This country cry. We the left hand give you people cry. Chia. <laughs> no, not from you know ball. how you try to be Good morning. I have a question for Sky. Mm-hmm. Is the court of arbitration for sports not a court which is competent enough to rely on their ruling to disqualify a parliamentary candidate in Ghana? Oguaba Kojo from Adenta. Decisions now? of courts outside Ghana are of persuasive authority and value only. They persuasive. Not, yeah. Not as against, they are not <laughs> binding, oh not unbinding. Oh so, you can use it to strengthen your local case, yeah, to the extent, but you can say you disagree, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Everything yeah. I will say is summarized in the question to Sky as to what exactly no, do read it in okay? Read Everything it in. I will say is summarized in the question Sky asked, uh-huh. okay. As to what exactly do we want our democracy to stand for? That is the question. Okay. That we is. can take actions now, but posterity mm. will definitely judge everything we do. Mm. Some time back, Preventive Detention Act was illegal. Same was sedition, criminal libel, sentenced to death by firing squad and co. Today, we all agree they weren't right for a democracy and even human rights. I believe we need to take ethics and even individual principles serious as a country. I rest my case, Swansea from Musu. Lots of interest in this. And they are imagine. very long. Let's read Kode from Amasaman. Kode says, have you guys forgotten that in Ghana, the wealthiest are those credited with wisdom and integrity 
everyone accused of wrongdoing anywhere in the world can always find a justification to exonerate themselves. But the difference between us and the Western world is that the Westerner values integrity beyond everything. They would resign at the least accusation because they value their name beyond wealth. Here in Ghana, people don't resign even when it's clear beyond reasonable doubts that their name has been smeared. Does anyone still doubt why we are where we are as a country? Hmm. Bernard. Yeah. Nyan Techi has now worsened his case by admitting he gave a hundred thousand dollar bribe to a nurse. Allegedly. He didn't, use the word allegedly. He, didn't say, he didn't say give it to yeah, a nurse. Okay, he said he offered he it, said to somebody he gave to it to gave it to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's end with Bakufi from Lakeside. Per the constitution read by Richard, how do we define a good character? He's a good character. Uh, good. It's a good character, not a perception based on morals from our cultural values, which is not constitutional. I feel he should be cleared per the laws of Ghana, and if found guilty per the constitution, he has equal right if to contest. If found not guilty. If found not, not guilty. guilty. Right. Those are some comments. Mm -hmm.